Good morning, everyone. <laughs> it's raining. How you say? Uh, let me see. Uh, the mic. Okay. Ooh. So here uh, at Namaste, how you say it? it's raining cats and dogs? Yeah. Ah, you see? It's raining cats and dogs here. Yeah. <laughs> It's been an adventure for me uh, to get here. And gatos y perros en español. Está lloviendo gatos y perros. Anyway, let us start with the prayer, the, the one that I really like because he helps me to get centered, which is abro mi corazón al amor. I open my heart to love. Abro mi mente a Dios. I open my mind to God. Mi alma es una con todo el universo. My soul is one with the whole universe. Amen. Amen. Anyway, I have a question for all of you. Zoom audience also. Hola. Todo el mundo. Everybody. <laughs> How do you know that you are really in a spiritual path? I mean, committed where you really are, that you know, okay, this is my life. Spiritual life is mine. How, how do you know? Well, I'm going to read something that I found. But it's not, I don't know the author. I don't know where it came from. I just found this. And it says, I am, I am in the on the spiritual path if, and there are, let me see, how many conditions? 11, Ooh, 11 conditions or 11. <laughs> questions or, you know, for you to help us decide or um, discern if we are in a spiritual path. It says, I am on the spiritual path if, number one, I always look for the good in each person or thing. But you answer yourself, okay, yes, I got it, yes, okay. I am on the spiritual path if, number two, I turn my back on the past, be it good or bad, and I live only in the present. Okay. Number three, I forgive everyone without exception, no matter what they have done, and I forgive myself wholeheartedly. Yes, okay. And we know what forgiveness is. We, we talked about that. And here at Namaste, we talk constantly. Number four, I am on the spiritual path if I consider my work or daily task as something sacred, trying to fulfill it to the best of my ability. And then he says, whether I like it or no. Yes. Yes. All right. Number five, I am on a spiritual path if I do everything in my power to manifest a healthy body and an harmonious environment around me. Yes. Okay, number six, if I try to render service to all others without doing it in a stupid or annoying way. <laughs> That's what it says. I'm reading. I know I didn't write this. <laughs> I'm reading. <laughs> Number seven. I am on a spiritual path if I unconditionally avoid criticism, refusing to listen to it or support it. 
Number eight, if I dedicate at least a quarter of an hour a day to meditation or prayer daily. Number nine, I say, well, this is what it says. Okay, I read, I am on a spiritual path if I read seven verses of the Bible or, or a chapter of a spiritual book daily. Yes. Okay, wow. Uh, people here are saying yes to everything. Muy bien, good. I am on a spiritual path if I train myself to give my first thought to God when I wake up. Yes. Yes. Means gratitude or, you know, here I am, God, I, anything. Ah, this one is, this is the last one. And this is very interesting. I am on a spiritual path. If I practice the golden rule of Jesus, I love my neighbor as myself. So or I do to others what I would like them to do to me. And from Buddha, I don't do to anyone what I would. I wouldn't want them to do to me. All right. <laughs> well, again, I don't know the author of this. So he, it sounds like <laughs> I read it to one of my sisters because actually, it was in Spanish that I, I got it. I, I translated it with the help of Jack. Um, one of my sisters says, oh, that sounds too complicated. <laughs> why, why it has to be too complicated to be in a spiritual path? That's what she told me last night. Anyway, that's my beloved, one of my 1,000 sisters, uh, <laughs> Nubia. <laughs> told me that oh my god that's like a lot at the end we know what the rule is we know we have been talking about love this is these are things that are, are nice to to share with each other and to but yes actually some of you here and i must say say yes immediately but we know that number one rule is love we know that. So I want, I feel inspired, I felt this morning to read because somebody at uh, uh, Instagram put a uh, place, something really beautiful, a, a poem about kindness that Rumi wrote. And I said, okay, then I'm going to read something about Rumi, about love, a poem. And I think I read it once a year, but it's so beautiful. It says, oh God, I have discovered love. How marvelous, how good, how beautiful it is. My body is warm from the heat of this love. How secret, how deep, how obvious it is. I offer my salutation to the stars and the moon, to all my brothers and all my sisters. I offer my salutations to the spirit of passion that aroused and excited this universe and all it contains. I have fallen unable to rise. What kind of trap is this? What chains have tied my hands and feet? It is so strange and so wonderful, this loving helplessness of mine. Be silent. Do not reveal the secret of my precious love. And then he says, love masters all things. I am mastered totally by love. My God is love. My prophet is love. My religion is love. I am a child of love. I have come to speak of nothing but love. Wow, that's beautiful. That was, he was having like a moment of ecstasy, of 
union, oneness with God and that spirit of love just embodied him completely. So, Vicky, what do you have to say <laughs> about this, my dear one? Good morning, Reverend Johannes, and thank you. <laughs> no, we all join you in that, in love. And I loved all of the ways to recognize where we are. And then I thought, well, what is it that's my bottom line? How do I know if I'm on a spiritual path, right? And yeah. this is what it came to me right away. It's pretty simple. I would now rather be happy than right. That's it. Because I was a real problem solver and I would fix things a lot with all whatever I had in my hand. And now and I would stand up for things and all that. And now I want to be happy. And the the vow I took, the promise I took January first for New Year's, some of you will remember, is joy without opposite. Wow. And that's where that comes in because the love of God is only our reality, my only reality that I want to recognize. And this has been a great year that could challenge that in every way, you know, from the wars, the economy, the um, pro-right, pro-life, pro-choice, pro-this, pro-that. It's a challenge in everything to be eminently practical. Jesus says this is a very practical course. And to keep my heart and my listening with the Holy Spirit. So I don't know like all the positions and all of the situations in my life or in our cultural life. I realize I don't know. And that's what makes me happy. I'm like a kid. I don't have to know. I don't have to know. I have to know that there is one with me who does know. And he will guide me. And the other thing I know that when I'm on a spiritual path is if I slip into self-talk rather than Holy Spirit talk. I keep constant dialogue, communion going on with the Holy Spirit. That's it. And, and that voice is a voice of love and joy without opposite. And there's never a demand on me. I, I never feel, oh, you must go do this, you must go do that. It's fall into my love, fall into the grace that heals you and frees you and releases you while accepting everything about myself. If I'm crying for a moment or I'm righteous about something for a moment, I bring it all right here to this inner communion. That's And I bring it there like I'm talking always to my best friend. Holy Spirit, well, what do you think about Roe versus Wade? What do you think about the economy? What do you think about Poland? What do you think? And I'm always brought to that, you know, and it's a prayer we all know, I'm here to be truly helpful. Holy Spirit, I really want to help. I want my mind to be part of this healing and awakening, part of taking my step like Jesus did, no matter what it looks like. And I find that what I'm continually redirected to is to rest in the love of God that that love of God is my everything. And when I rest in it in the safety of my own little home or room, when it's time for me to speak, to stand, to go do something, what I'm to do comes naturally because I've done the groundwork of keeping my mind and my heart trusting in the love of God where my happiness is where all my brothers and sisters in this time and space place, where our happiness is, to bring about the realization of where the true government is, where the true authority is, where the true freedom is. And I try to stay living in the freedom of love and be still the most practical bearer of the witness of love to wherever I am or to whoever I'm with not run away from what's going on in time and space, but to, to look at it directly and acknowledge what it brings up in me, whether I'm hurt or frightened, often frightened, oh no, or sad. Let that feeling, and we've talked about this, this is what forgiveness is and purification. I bring it to the Holy Spirit, but what I have learned to do more and more is do it quickly. 
All right, Holy Spirit. Yesterday I was with my sister and she was very upset and nervous with me about everything. And finally I said, okay, Noreen, what, let me just be direct because I was going to stay over. Do you want me to stay or go? And then because I, I wasn't challenging any of her ideas, whatever she was talking about, I just want to love you. I just, and all of a sudden it's like it all turned and she just hugged me and thanked me and started to cry and say, oh, thank you, thank you. I'm sorry I've been so, so mean. I just am scared. I said, oh, I know that. I just want to help you. Oh, okay. And then we spent the whole afternoon doing everything in practical stuff, in the joy of love. And that's with everything. You know, a sister rubs us the wrong way, a brother insults us, somebody criticizes us, or whatever it is. It's all a call for love. That's what help is. It's a call for love. We're the helpers. That's our profession. We're the professional helpers. We have to answer everyone, answer the children in the Ukraine and the children in Russia and the children that are born and not born. We have to answer with love, that God's love is still here present. We are part of that, and that is our only reality. But that I will not turn away from any picture. I'll bring the picture to the Holy Spirit, to the voice of love, and I will listen for the voice of love. And whatever it guides me or directs me to do or say, I'll just do it fearlessly. Even if someone doesn't like it, I'll let that be another answer to listening and choosing happiness over being right and recognizing everything is a call for love. If it isn't love, it's calling for love. And I'm here to answer that. And we are all here to answer that call for love wherever we find ourselves. And the joy that I find in this is that there are no big and small loves. All love is everything. So if I answer the call for love from my little cat that comes up and says, please pat me, to answering the world's problems, it's the same love. And I'm activating love here in this consciousness. When Jesus says he needs our heart and eyes and our minds to be part of the love that's present here, I keep my mind to be happy in love, joyful in love, willing to look at everything, welcome everything, you know, Rumi's poem, The Guest House, and welcome, 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 and bring it all to the voice for love, for direction. And mostly, just stay happy in that love, celebrate the love of God, and most of all, enjoy it. We come every morning because we enjoy each other. <laughs> we enjoy all our voices for love, don't we? It's like, okay. We're all going to sing the love of God no matter what the game board looks like. It's just a game board. But our reality and our heart belongs to God, belongs to love. That's it. Ah, so. Victoria. <laughs> Only God knows how much I needed to hear those loving, beautiful words. Oh, my God. Joanne, my sister. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. The only God knows. Anyway, talking about love. Thank you, Victoria. That's it. That's, I mean, that's all. We are instrument, actually, in the Course in Miracles. Teach only love because that's what you are. And that's, that's the answer. And to be loving with ourselves also. I am struggling with a decision that I have to make. So your words help me, <laughs> Victoria. As I would say in Spanish, bella y preciosa. Gracias. <laughs> Actually, in the gospel, Jesus says, three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. In A Course in Miracles, on chapter six, if you want to, it says, you must teach only one lesson. You are only love. When you deny this, you make what you are something you must learn to remember. I love that. We are actually together learning to remember that we are love. And also from 
from the gospel. Uh, Jesus was asked by one of the teachers of all the commandments, which is the most important. And he says, the most important one is love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. So beloved ones, this is no new. We have been listening and reading and for, for centuries. So these themes of love, of what we are and it's, we have, it's not new. Now I have something else that I found because people ask me, okay, what it means by love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, what is that? And then I did my research and it says this, the typical interpretation of loving a neighbor as oneself is affinity for kindness, patience, gentleness in relationships with neighbors, which is Victoria, what you did in your conversations or interaction with your, friend, with your friend. Affinity for kindness, patience, gentleness in relations with neighbors. And then the question is, how can I love my neighbor as myself? Number one, be generous. Number two, be ethical. Remembering that if a man gains or a woman gains the whole world but loses his soul, what has he gained? Number three, be fair. Judge all things and people honestly. Number four, be kind. Sometimes one of the most difficult things to do is mine. Kindness, beloved ones. And then number five, be peaceful. He is actually, you know, the, the aim of the Course in Miracles is to remove all obstacles for love. And then it says, the sign that you are there just at the, you know, at the door of call it awakening or embodying the Christ consciousness or any way you call it is when you are at peace, a total peace. Peace is the sign that we are right there. <clears throat> so that's my class or my interaction, my expression of love to each one of you today. If there is anything, because we want to do the, the prayer for protection, don't stop it yet. Mm -hmm. one, of, um, one of the things I did, I tried to, uh, I tried to, to, so that our brother James would send something about love, but he, he couldn't, he's busy today, he's coming back tonight, so he will be with us tomorrow, okay, so... So let's do our prayer for protection. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, all of you. And thank you, all of you. So we do, you can put it. The, okay, well, I'm going to do the prayer for protection from my heart. You do it also in your house. Oh my God. The rain here is amazing. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it, the Zoom audience. So we say together, the light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. 
The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Amen, amen, amen. Y punto. Y punto. Okay, God bless you, all of you. Thank you. I love you all. Happy Wednesday.